Hi, and welcome to our second LRD webinar for fall 2021. This session is going to focus on Library 101. I want to thank you for attending today, and I also want to let you know that this session is being recorded, and we will allow time for questions both recorded and unrecorded at the end. The recording will be sent out today to those who registered, and it will also be posted on our YouTube page this afternoon in case you'd like to watch it again. So to get started, what is Library 101? First, Library 101 is free. It is also comprehensive and it is self-paced. It is our library and information literacy skill building program based in Blackboard. The goal of Library 101 is to provide a self-paced learning resource that informs students about research and information skills that are important for their academic career and lifelong learning needs. Library 101 is structured to be highly targeted, modular, and easy to go through. There are individual modules covering a vast variety of topics, and each of those modules is incredibly specific and targeted. And at the end of each module, we have a short quiz for all learners to assess their own learning. For faculty, these quizzes can also be used for extra credit assignments. The content of Library 101 falls within six areas. We have of course, information on course information, walking you through what Library 101 is and how to use it. We have a section on information literacy, another section on the research, research process, not the research profess, definitely missed that typo. We also have a section on research and library skills, academic writing, and a small section on our recommended tools. To get access to Library 101, there are two ways. First, you can email us at ask at udc.libanswers.com and you will be enrolled individually. Or one of your professors or a professor may request class enrollment and all we ask is for a list of your roster and a screenshot from Banner or Blackboard works perfectly for this and we can mass enroll an entire class. You can also request content. It does not matter if you are a faculty member, a student, or a staff member of UDC. If you are interested in learning something and the library can provide that service, we are happy to create a module specific to your needs covering a topic area of something the library has expertise in. So now I'd like to move into a live demo. So for Library 101, it is based in Blackboard, which is the U university's learning management system. So here I am at the Blackboard login page and you simply log in using your U UDC email and password. Now, when you log in, you will be taken to the main Blackboard homepage. Oop, I'm on my UDC here. One moment. This is what happens when you preset things up and then sit around for a while. So now I'm logging into Blackboard. And you will see we are being taken to the main UDC homepage. Now, since I am the creator of Blackboard, or I am the creator of our Blackboard course, it is going to look a little bit different, but I will enter the student preview so you can see what it looks like to you. So Library 101 is not a course, even though we do call it a course. It is under the organizations menu. So if you are interested in Library 101 and want to enroll, or if you have been enrolled, you will find it under organizations. Now, all of your organizations will be listed here. I have it starred in my favorites, simply so you find it up, but we have this nice red graphic to try to make it easy to find. When you click into Library 101 here, for a brief moment, you will see the back end of what it looks like since I'm the owner here, um, but I'm gonna enter the participant preview. Here we are now in Library 101, and as you can see, it looks just like any other Blackboard course. There is a calendar, discussions, gradebook, messages, and if you scroll down, this is where you get to the meat of Library 101. Over here, you can see the groups and if we have any announcements or if we decide to own, have an open session, we will announce that here. But the main bulk of what you want is right here under the organization content. And as I mentioned earlier, these are the main modules we have, course information, information literacy, and so on. I'm gonna click into course information. And as you can see, if you are a regular user of Blackboard, this looks like just like any other course. So in our course information, we have our introduction and welcome to you. And you can scroll through to the next sections to learn more about a summary of what the course offers, the learning objectives if you are to complete the entirety of the Library 101 content, 
the course structure, which is a breakdown of how each of the modules is set up. Information to contact us, including our website, email, phone number, chat, and appointments. And additional library information that we recommend, including our library orientation guide, our hours, frequently asked questions, our blog, social media, our YouTube account, and how to log in directly to your library account. Now I'm going to jump into each of these uh, informational modules and just give you a rundown of what is available in each of them, and I'll do a deep dive into one module within each section. So in the information literacy section, this is where we provide information about information literacy and how it impacts both your academics and your life. So that includes things like what is information literacy? And as you can see, we have a quiz after each section. Another topic in this area is research resilience, the purpose and cost of information, and authority. I'm gonna do my deep dive here into research resilience. Now in research resilience, this is a good entryway into how all of our modules work. We open with learning objectives, and then we start to cover the topic. And yes, to try to keep things visually interesting, we do include photos. We have headings for each of our sections. Text that we find is important is bolded or italicized to make it a little bit more skimmable. And as you scroll down, you will see each of the information modules is complete and comprehensive for the topic that it's covered. And at the end, we tried to connect to related sections. So if you wanna mo learn more about topics that were covered under research resilience, those are at the bottom. And then we can move on to our research resilience quiz. And as you can see here, we made the due date very far out into the future because unless your professor assigned these, these are optional and all attempts are unlimited. Library 101 has no impact on your grade with the university or any particular course unless your professor assigns it. We simply included these quizzes to help you assess your own learning. And each of the assessments is short and obviously it's open book. So feel free to have the quiz open in one screen and the module in the other. And we've tried to make it easy to help you assess your own learning for each area. Moving on, we are now entering the section on the research process. And the research process basically walks you through how to define, find, and use information. And so that includes things like what is research, developing a research topic, collecting background information, creating a thesis, finding sources, and evaluating sources. Now we've tried to put this in a linear logical order when it comes to research, but as many people know, research is not a linear or straightforward process. And so that's what we try to cover here. But the thing I wanna do my deep dive on is evaluating sources. Now in our evaluating sources section, as you will see, again, we have those learning objectives. We state the importance of evaluating resources, and then we give ways to help you learn how to better evaluate the sources that you find, including the CRAAP test, which is one of the big methods, and another one we like called the five Ws. And as you will see here, we have a video, and these come from our YouTube page. So you can get to these independently um, on your own through YouTube, or you can watch them right here embedded within Library 101. We have also included where applicable, sheets to download. So here in our five W sheets, I'm gonna download the original file. And as you can see, when I open it, this is just a PDF walking you through sort of a checklist of how to evaluate sources using the five W method. And so where we can, we've tried to include these takeaways for you to bring and use. Going further on, we include information on where to find how to evaluate sources, because how you evaluate a book and how you evaluate an article and how you evaluate a website are all different because these are different sources. And we try to give you information on how to do that. We also cover things like scholarly, popular, and reliable. And here we have embedded charts where if you click on them, they get bigger so that you can see the information in the charts more clearly. And if you right click, you can always save these images to your own desktop. Where possible, we've made it easy to have you try to quote unquote steal things, but really we're just trying to make it easier for you to make, you know, hold on to the information that is in this course long after your time at the university. I'll scroll down again since I accidentally clicked out, but as you can see, we've built in some charts. We have information 
all related to evaluating resources, including things about how to evaluate things on the web. Again, another takeaway on how to evaluate websites and then frequently asked questions that we get about evaluating sources. And again, at the bottom, we have those related sections that we recommend. Now, moving on, we are now in research and library skills. And these are about specific research skills and specific library skills. And that includes things like what's available at the library. And that simply covers everything you could find at our library or any library in the area. Information about library databases, keywords, search skills, finding books, finding articles, searching the web, and government documents. And I'm gonna do a deep dive in this section on search skills. So in our search skills section, again, we have a heads up here because we want you to go through the keyword section before you read this section. And we've done this to several of our modules simply when we think the information in one section is necessary to know for the information in another. Then we have our learning objectives and information about how you use search skills in different areas of where you, know, you can develop you know, different levels of search skills, including our favorite Boolean operators, quotation marks, parentheses, and wild cards. And this keeps going. And the reason I wanted to do the deep dive in this section is we try to show you things to make this applicable to real life, to make it more easily understandable. So you can see things like how you can put together an entire search string like we've done right here or how you can build on your sample searches. So we always recommend starting broad and then working your way down. And you can see how search results get more and more granular, granular the more you add um, these different search techniques. And then we include information about like citation chaining, doing searches for journals, using Google and Google Scholar, WorldCat, or hey, ask a librarian. And again, we have those related sections at the bottom. Now scrolling down, in our final main section, we have academic writing. And this is a relatively new section, so we are still adding information, but we have stuff on getting started on your paper, using sources, meaning how you integrate and synthesize the sources you find in your research assignment, citations, plagiarism, and this one was a faculty request last semester, annotated bibliographies and literature reviews. And both annotated bibliographies and literature reviews were recently added after faculty request. Now, since a lot of our students have to do annotated bibliographies, I'm gonna do my quick deep dive into that section. And again, as it opens up, you'll get those learning ob objectives. You will see we've included a video here. We have information about what an annotated bibliography is, how you write an annotated bibliography, and why would you write an annotated bibliography? Now, this session, as you will see, was a lot shorter than the others simply because there's not as much to say here. So the section length is depends on the content that we cover. So some sections are longer than others. Right now, we believe that to finish the entire Library 101, it would take you about five to eight hours if you were to sit down and continuously do it and do every quiz. That said, some people are gonna be a lot faster at this than others, but this is why it is self-paced and you can come and go as you please. There is no one way to use Library 101. Um, you could jump in and do everything right in the row as it is listed, or you can bounce in and out of sections as you need them. Now, before I get to questions, I do wanna say our very last section is our recommended resources and tools. And these are things we think are most important for the link out to. So our full database list, UDC search, our recommended research guides. We have online guides devoted to every single subject taught at the university. So you can get directly to that full list here. You can schedule an appointment with us, see our FAQs, use Prep Step, which is an online skill building program, just like Library 101, but it covers a lot of things like computer skills, Spanish placement trusts, and things like that. And Zotero, which is our recommended way for citation management, and that is a free online source. Now I'm just gonna go back to the top. And I would like to thank you for attending the session today. And I'm gonna give time for questions, both recorded and unrecorded. So if you have any questions about Library 101, please feel free to drop them in the chat or unmute yourself. And I would be happy to answer any questions you have. OK. 
okay? And as I give time for questions to come in, I have dropped an assessment form in the chat if you would be so kind as to fill that out so we can determine what webinars to offer in the future. Right? It doesn't look like we're gonna have any questions recorded, so I'm going to stop the recording and then give time for unrecorded questions. One moment, please. <laughs> 